Welcome everyone to this amazing and new and innovative podcast on planet Earth called The Behavior Code. This is where we talk about genetic behavior and men and women communications, men and men communications, women and women communications, the social matrix, the money matrix, the power matrix, the love matrix, the dating matrix, and specifically, I, your host, Yogi Chris, PhD, am interviewing various uh, participants and graduates of Arash Sapar Dibazar's Messengers program. And if you don't know who Arash Sapar Dibazar is, go to Instagram, look up AZD, uh, or just go to arashsapar.com and you'll see who he is. And, uh, you know, so you know who I am. I'm your host, Yogi Chris, PhD of Ninth Limb Yoga. You find everything about me out on, you know, YouTube, Ninth Limb. Go to the, your URL bar, put in ninthlimb.com with the number nine. And so that's enough about what I'll say about me. You, you should know who I am by this point, or if you're just now catching the broadcast, uh, you could see all my other podcasts and everything else about me. Got a lot of communication out there. I'm joined by Fernando Caro, my good friend and colleague from Los Angeles. He's a Los Angeles real estate expert, and I'll let him tell a little bit more about the ins and outs of that because I don't know the language of that sort of thing. But I know he's doing really, really well taking care of a very big extended family as a man in his young 20s, and he looks sharp doing it too. So there's a super bright future for this guy. I'm very pleased to know this man at this point in his career because I feel like really I'm getting in on ground floor. And, you know, so that's good for me. I, I feel like I'm investing dollars in something that's about to go IBM. And or I don't know if that's a dated technology, you know, we're about to go Apple or about to go Google on us. So here he is, Fernando Caro. Please, brother, catch me up with uh, your day. How you doing? Uh, you know, just shoot the shit for a second. What's going on with you, brother? Absolutely, brother. And thank you very much. I'm very honored. Anytime you get to speak to a world master, traveling yogi, PhD, yogi, Chris Doblis. And so, you know, thank you for having me here. Matt, my experience of life, as it seems, continues to elevate from the very first time that we began the Tadia process. And it's honestly a treasure to say that you were there to experience my, the birthing of this new uh, lifestyle. And I can say certainly through all the experiences. Now, I'm someone who came from when it used to be Tadia live to where it's now transitioned into the messengers. And everything I've learned up to date from, I believe it was in May, has truly revolutionized the way I think, the way I speak, the way I act, and the way I carry myself in all that I do in, as you mentioned, real estate, um, also and, uh, you know, family. So a program came at the right time that I needed in my life was to become a man. And every technique, every practice, every experience that has been embedded into myself and all the practitioners of this art gave me the, the blueprint, gave me the, the vision to see what it is I can be and embody in my life. And so I now move through life as stronger than ever and it continues to elevate and everything that I do practices, you know, just the entire experience is giving me a way of living, right? And so some of the things that I do now in my daily life are the art forms of yoga. Prior to this, I've never done yoga. And so it handled a lot of the problems I used to have with physical health and eating. I was a, a bigger kid growing up. And so I always struggled with the management of my diet, the management of, you know, this repressive and overconsumption of foods. This is the world that I grew up in. And so that changed when beginning an art form such as boxing, such as yoga, that's combated everything, any of those problems and insecurities that I used to carry. And I can now move through life easier and lighter by the dedication that I have towards these crafts and also the dedication that I have towards my business and handling everything else that goes on in my life. So it's been a tremendous asset. For sure, for and, sure, you know? Yeah. Let me ask you, getting right into it, because you're naming things, you know, uh, like we had Brian Casella on last week, and, you know, what an honor for me to, uh, you know, share the the yoga room with you men that came to the uh, Tabiat trainings and the Messengers trainings and going to San Jose and Arash Dibazar even getting into yoga, because I knew him before he got into yoga. And I 
can't help but feel I had a positive influence there, but that's, it's great to, you know, do the yoga practice alongside you guys. And it's great to hear that you are uh, taken to it and it does a lot for you. And I'm hearing a lot of those benefits. It's amazing. And if you're like me, I'm wondering, uh, has it been where, you know, as you function in your day and your business and you just go about living that you get these, um, you get glimpses or reminders of almost like the energy of the event where it's like, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's hard for me to, or it's difficult for me to exactly describe what it is that, um, you know, I'm going through or what's being said or what's happening and point to it and say, this came from messengers or this came from Tabia. Sometimes I can, obviously like you're naming, uh, without naming them, you're naming a bunch of techniques, you know, different meditation and visualizations and things that you're, you're naming without really naming them things, you know, to open your third eye and, you know, things to really absorb solar energy, a lot of alchemy processes. These are the things that Arash Dibuzar teaches. And, um, but is, are you like me in that you notice like your perception and your, uh, your internal narration and how you understand the world uh, that you'll get glimpses of, wow, I'm totally, I'm changed. Like I'm different because I'm seeing things different and something like that. I don't know. Would you add on to that or how do you just say it? A hundred percent brother. That's exactly the experiences of life that I have every day now is being the observer of, my experience of life, being the, the observer of every moment, of every emotion, uh, of every communication line. And it's, it's incredible to see really the effects that take place with every word, every posture, every, every motion in life. And you're always the creator of it. So a lot of the practices come back to my mind and I keep them very close to me as I move through life. Because yes, they can adrift and go into the subconscious mind and you will revisit them when time comes. However, there are certain practices that I've now integrated into my daily practices, my rituals, as I call them, that keep me aware of my experiences. So fuck yeah, 100%. Fuck yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not muted. Uh, so well, brother, um, are there any specifics that stand out to you? You know, this training, uh, a lot of people, or we could even go into like, yep. um, no, let's, let's stick with this where it's like, are there any specifics that stand out? Maybe even particularly from the last messengers, the very last one was, uh, I don't know, two, three weeks ago, you know, it was three, four hour lectures, you know, so about 10 to 12 hours of lectures total. And it had a, you know, it's all online. So it's on zoom and you, he's, lecturing in these last three lectures because every time has been new and different and you know more than most people how new and different every time is because you come every time and it's like shit like he's not covering any of the same material each time maybe like five percent just to like connect it or something um so this last time had a lot on linguistics etymology breaking down words getting some uh you know through 10 or 12 or 15 different definitions of words seeing different loops in the english language that um, you know, really spells out what's really going on here with perception and how our understanding of men, women, money, government, the family unit, the religions, pre predominant religions, like we, uh, a different understanding of it. And it would sound crazy. And it's like he said, it's the, the teachings are guarded by the fact that they sound so absurd that if you just tell people on face value, this word, that word, this word, you have to actually stay and listen for 10 hours so he can connect all the dots for you because it, each one taken separate is um, pretty far-fetched. Not too far-fetched things you would get, but you know the bigger theme of what he's transmitting and the freedom that you feel afterwards when you get the teachings and you say, wow, you get more control. Like, is there anything specifically from that lecture series, The Last Messengers event, uh, that stands out to you and how it's, a uh, you know, how you've integrated it with your being and your life and, you know, anything specific you can share? Absolutely, brother. The last messenger's extension course was loaded with, as you said, information that would really change the entire lifestyle of somebody, the, the entire being of somebody. And that's what I experienced. It was information that <laughs> just transformed my entire existence on planet earth and the way I do life and understand the moments in time. So 
one that sticks out to me is the constant awareness of life. And I walk with this. It's easy to, you know, just fall into the cycle and the, the matrix, as you will, of life and what's on the instance, but with the information, the data. So let's say, for example, the breathing of the, the breathing meditation to activate the third eye, that one's been crucial daily practice. Not crucial. It's been, it's been enjoyed in my daily practice. When I speak, how I speak to my clients and how it affects my business, the selection of words and understanding the alphabet, understanding the proper syntax, understanding communication in itself. And it, it's definitely revolutionized the way I communicate to women, the way I communicate to friends, family members, people that I care for, uh, my clients. Because there was moments in time where we, where I, spoke a word or spelled out a word and it created a negative effect and I had no idea. And I believe, I remember you calling me out on the moment as well. But when you get this information, this technology, you now use it in your daily lives. So it's something that anybody can grasp if you're coming with an open mind to understand new information. Um, and so it's really ultimately changed my entire existence and my entire way of being. 100% my relationships. For sure, for sure. There's two things that, for example, two things as you're talking that I'm reminded of specifically from the event. One was there was a specific word and Arash really drilled it in uh, that we were using in just common everyday English that was referring to God. And it just kept referring to God. And this word just kept referring to God, but we didn't know it because it was hidden in the etymology of the word but your nervous system still responds so on some level. Your subconscious knows this because it's so similar with other words. And so I've caught where I've used that word so frequently. And whereas it used to be so much more, I was using it. Now I'm not using it hardly at all. I use it almost to refer to God <laughs> and that said like to give that kind of emphasis. So it's totally changed my lexicon you could say how i use my dictionary of words my personal dictionary of words is a lexicon like how i use it how frequently i use it yes that's one uh, of the practices as well for me is bringing awareness every moment and understanding words so curiosity has sparked in my mind to constantly seek out words and understand the etymology as say every day every time i read every time i study yeah. And I'd say when I, when I first found Arash four or five years ago, I was training. I mean, I found him about six years ago, but you know, it took a year before, um, five years ago. A little, yeah. Something like that. Anyway, I was training with his old, uh, one of the guys that was coaching for him. His name is Malachi. And I did like two months or three months in his program. And Malachi used to do things like look up word definitions and etymology of things. And it makes sense because he was working in the same office with Arash. I'm sure and he'd done a lot of programs with them. So I'm sure he got those. And that was like four or five years ago or five years ago. And, but that was like one at a time. Like, here's a word. It's interesting. Give a teaching around it. How, you know, people have been obscured by, you know, like I give a word uh, about like hard, like the word hard, like when we use hard in our language and it's the things that we're referring to as hard aren't really hard because it's hard as a substance. It's like a characteristic of material. It's not a, characteristic of like a task something can't be hard it's difficult and i give you know a lot more of the, those sorts of things but he would do like one word at a time and give like a teaching around it like i could totally expand on the hard teaching i'm going easy with it because yeah. i give a deeper teaching in the silent flute and but arash did like 10 or 12 or 15 in a row that somehow circled back around on itself you know dealing with the ocean and dealing with electricity and dealing with um, uh, the moon and the sun and, uh, and various things. And he goes into different symbols and whatever. And it's definitely made me more attentive to the words I hear, the words I say. Um, and I really think the third eye breathing meditation has enhanced that because, I mean, I'm a yogi. I've done a lot of meditations, a lot of different breathings, uh, very intensely too. I've gone deep with those things. And I think I had a unique sensitivity to what he taught, but it's so much in his delivery of the instructions of how to do it. 
because I almost, I almost already knew those instructions, but it was the way he said it when he said it that um, I've had such profound experiences with his voice and the words, you know, being able to move my attention in different parts of my own inside in my system uh, by, um, by his delivery of that. Anyway, so the way he taught that third eye breathing meditation, you know, it enhanced my awareness of my third eye immediately. And I continued to practice it because it was so enjoyable how, how it is. It's so easy. And I've been having these strange glimpses, like as I walk around uh, or, you know, just whatever I'm doing and I function and I, I do a few breaths of that technique he showed. And I get this glimpse of like almost a glimpse of what it is that I'm doing minus any emotions about it. Wow. Like exactly where I am, what I'm doing, and I'm seeing out of my eyes and hearing out of my ears. Like I don't change anything, but internally I, when I do that third eye breathing meditation, he showed, I perceive everything. I almost, I, I hesitate to say it like this, but I'm going to say it. I see it as it is. And it not with like so much of an internal interpretation. Like I seem to let go of the internal interpretation very fast. And sometimes it happens involuntarily that like, just while I'm doing things, I seem to get these perspectives that are uh, detached, you could say from the inner story. And that's all thanks to that particular meditation he gave. So that's like a, a specific thing that I've noticed. Um, it, sound, it sounds like maybe you're experiencing that a little bit too. Oh, he just, he got logged off and logged back in. Uh, flip it sideways, Fernando, on your phone. And uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I basically just wrapped it up with the third eye, telling about the third eye thing. But it sounds like maybe you're having that kind of experience too, brother. Hello? Ah, oh, I think I lost his reception. Well, what do you, um, we got some audience members. If you got any comments or anything, you could type that and... You know, what do you think about the, anything I'm talking about? Feel free to do that. If you're on Facebook, we got a few viewers there. Feel free to type uh, any comments um, and I'll try to get to that. Oh, there's Fernando. Can you see me? Yeah, I see and you hear you now. Yeah, so I was just wrapping up about the third eye thing. It sounds like you were basically experiencing uh, something similar. Am I right? Absolutely. Uh, yes, you know, it's, it's an incredible technique. It's such a simple practice. And as you said, it, it just the experience that you can have in that moment when practicing this is hard to none. I, I honestly can't put words around what I feel and how I feel, but how you said it is it paints exact picture and image of the feeling I get as well of handling my shit. And it was something that I did earlier on when I felt a tremendous burden of shit. Uh, and handling the obstacles of life. So it's definitely always something that I keep in my pocket and pull it out anytime it's anytime I need it. And so it's been revolutionary. For, for sure, for sure, for sure. Well, brother, is um, what, where else? Have you noticed anything else uh, from the last messengers um, or from the live messengers that uh, you see playing itself out in your life right now? from being live is seeing how to conduct yourself and create environments, create safety. So a big part of my life was especially being known in my communities and how I can create these environments friendly to me. And so what I've brought with me as I experienced life out here is now I'm getting to meet a lot of business owners, a lot of local, uh, local places. And so my business is beginning to grow in that sense as well. And a lot of the content that I push on social media and that I promote on social media revolves around that, revolves around other individuals, revolves around my lifestyle and what I do and my communication line, so to speak. And uh, yeah, man, it's just an experience that one needs to have to see a way of life, a way of being. And I can say ultimately that my existence today and the way I live, my reality of life is something that I have the blueprint of seeing one's life and building my life in a similar fashion in my own world. And so I'm excited to see how much further this thing can go. 
for sure, for sure. I'm really curious, brother, is, uh, you know, you invested $25,000 back into May, in May. And, uh, you know, that was a big investment. And then since then, because you're an alumni, you get to return for a much reduced price. Every time you go back to San Jose Live for a three-day event, it's only $1,000. And, you know, for uh, coming to the extension program, it's $500. And whereas other people now, you know, some people are seeking to manifest 25K. Some people are seeking to manifest 5K. Some people are having trouble manifesting 5K. You being on the other side of things, you already, you summoned up, you were saying at the beginning of the episode, it wasn't easy. It was back in May. Business wasn't where it is now. And you had a lot of people relying on you. And, you know, so you still summoned up 25K. And then since then, you know, you come at this much reduced rate. But now you're seeing other people struggle or just go through the effort of, you know, doing something that maybe they've never done before, which is summon up 5K or, you know, what's your perspective of these people because everybody wants to come. I, almost nobody do I message, hey, have you heard of the messengers? And they're like, yeah, I've heard of the messengers. I'm like, you want to come? And almost nobody says no. Everybody's like, yeah, man, I really want to come. But, but, and then there's the but. And um, what's your perception of, so that, that should give you a hint that almost everybody you've seen on Love Spell, Diamond Mind, Mentorship, or really heavily following Arash uh, has been messaged by me. And so if you're not seeing them on the messengers, that means they've had an objection that they, and they didn't manifest. And so knowing that looking on the outside after doing that, making that big event, cause you were like 23 years old, I think at the time. And am I right? No, 23? I'm 22 right now. Oh, tw 22 shit. And that's huge, man. I was 33 when I did that. And so what's your perspective or what's your take on, um, on that phenomenon, what I just described? Absolutely. One would be, I mean, everybody's on their own path in life and to come up with the investment of $25,000. Now I work in real estate. And so $25,000 can be summoned up with a few sales. Now one in particular would be get into an industry that you have the ability to make them. Winners. That would be an option Two, if not is, just become resourceful and which is what I did and using your ability to communicate and speak out to the world. So a lot of the practices that I did during that time, I believe I had a month or a little bit over a month to manifest $25,000 uh, was just to keep that image in my mind. A lot of uh, imagery and a lot of uh, law of attraction. Wow. But then it was also, integrated with uh, action and going out and really building the communication lines, the communication lines to get me closer to that money. So I had to write out a list or I wrote out a list and wrote down who the fuck can get me the resource that I need, the energy that I need to fuel my experience of life. And so I made a list of people who I can speak to. And I started there and I started speaking to people as, and I felt uh, as I was getting closer and closer to the money, more opportunities started to open up to my abilities to really manifest the 25,000 by the time the event came around. So I can think of that right now, very clear in my mind and just maximizing my resources and be staying in communication with Chris to continue to push me because it's easy to, you know, succumb to the problems of life. However, it was important to have, you know, accountability in that sense. Are we still here? Are we all here still? If you, if you all can hear me, I see everything well. And it was that that brought me towards my desire to ultimately learn this information. I had to ask myself, what's most important? Is my life or the investment of $25,000 bigger than my, my, my way of being, my lifestyle and what I was currently having? Okay, perfect. You should be back on. It's okay. We're still recording. So it was at the time I had to just ultimately become resourceful and reach out. And a lot of it was inner game. A lot of it was getting out of my ego, stepping out of, no, I shouldn't ask for anybody for help. I shouldn't expand my resources. I, I shouldn't uh, go get credit cards or I did everything possible to get me to where I needed to be. And now you're seeing me in the form of 
manifesting all of that, manifesting all the barriers, going through the shit that was in the way, the doubt in my mind, the problems on the outside, the restrictions and barriers that life gave me, and moving and squeezing through the cracks um, is very possible for anybody. I don't care where you're from. You know, it should, that should not stop you from your desire of having what it is, what it, what it is you want in life. And so it became very clear. And part of that was an experience that I needed at the age of 22. It was the part of the experience that I, I can speak something that I desire and go out and set out till I get it. And that's the power of building your goals. That's the power of your business. That's the power of you initiating and really evolving your life and what you do in the world is seeking that. So that became step one in getting to Tabia. That became the first level of getting to where I wanted to be. Tabia now has transcended into the messengers and the messengers has truly, it, every experience has gotten better and better and better because it's all new information. It's not an event that you go to and it's the same repetitive uh, datums. It's the same repetitive stories. It's the same repetitive information that the masses are getting. This is a high ticket program for a reason. It's $25,000. Now in your mind, you had to ask as I did myself, is it, why is this $25,000? Now I didn't ask that question because I already knew it. it was clear. And if you're watching this video right now, you know, it's clear. Now it's just your ability to really seek out and push your mind aim your mind to manifesting this, this event, manifesting this experience of life. Because everything I do from now, from where I began has changed. And my way of viewing the world has changed. And you become a great influence, great power, great status. And the ability that you can now create every day is now a new story. You're, you're the author of your story. And so you're always painting the picture of life with words and understanding symbols and understanding energy and understanding the mind but it gets so much deeper so there's levels to this experience but as you begin you must begin now because this is where you need to be exactly to get you to where you will be whenever right i had no idea i'd be here and luckily we have people in such a great community the the caliber of people the quality is beyond none beyond none you won't find this anywhere and I'm here in the heart of Los Angeles, where in our entire existence of life, you know, we've all possibly wanted to be out here as well. Now I'm from here, but I will tell you this, that I've never met a group of people, powerful individuals, world changers, than the group that we have here in the Rise of the Messengers. Now, I'm not sure if Yogi Chris is gonna join us, However, I see that we're still live. If you have any questions, I'll definitely take questions. Can you share an example of word? Yes, I'll answer your question. Can you share an example of a word that really moved you? One that brought awareness to my life was good morning. Good morning. We begin the day telling others good morning. But if we look in our mind and we look at the word morning, what does morning mean? The word morning also has a definition that means to when you mourn, a time of mourning, a time of grieving time of depression, death, sorrow. And so we constantly throw out the spell, good morning. Now people will combat that and say and question, well, it's a different type of morning. It's still different. Yes, but subconscious, subconsciously, it still affects you in a way. It's a contradiction in the sense. So beginning my mornings, you see that? Beginning my mornings, my time of grieving, my time of sorrow, with, on a negative slope. Now, as we change the words, good day to you, has a, has a different experience. Good day to you. 
And so that's a simple word that we commonly use in our life that's changed the way I approach other human beings because we begin with word, we begin life with word. And anytime you're communicating to the world, you begin with your first word, good, good day to you, good day to you. You'll see different effects change just from this simple, simple, simple shift. Absolutely, absolutely. And so I always begin my communication lines with good day, with clients, with family, with friends, good day to you. And I will review, I'll review you in one second. Awesome, awesome. So I just spoke with Yogi Chris. We'll be ending this live. If you guys can leave an awesome review, um, you know, Yogi Chris has done a tremendous job in the creation of build, building this channel, building this platform, and passing along through this lineage of information. So if you guys have any questions, you can always reach out to myself. You can reach out to Yogi Chris. Find us on our social media platforms as we are very active on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Follow us, follow Yogi Chris, and uh, let's continue moving forward in this thing called life. So thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, being here with us. Have a good evening.